IT Insights. Talks on business and IT challenges with tech leaders. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of IT Insights by Future Processing. My name is Michael and my guest today is Herman Hertelier, a Chief Information Officer and Business Leader experience in setting up and working with agile responsive organizations that continuously change and adapt to market needs, mainly in the customer services and supply industry. Herman, it's a great pleasure having you here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you introduce yourself a bit to our audience? What's your experience? What you've been up to to date? Okay, so uh, I'm uh, typically what you would call uh, a um, business uh, CIO as opposed to a technical CIO coming out of the, uh, uh, let's call it the uh, consumer uh, industry. Uh, my career has been telecommunications, uh, energy, also uh, done a bit of work with the integrators of this world or technology industry. And so now I see that uh, in, in an international group that gives um, parking services across Europe and everything that goes with that into the parking industry. So again, consumer-oriented, uh, always a customer in front of us uh, and a customer that is becoming more and more digital, of course, as we go forward, B2C and B2B market. It's a very interesting division you mentioned, business CIO and the technology CIO. How do you, how do you understand it? Let's say um, there are, um, I mean, there are all kinds of, of companies, of course, in front of us. Uh, there are companies that whose, uh, let's say, way of doing business uh, and, 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 and how they work uh, is quite stable because it's more uh, inward looking, like uh, the business of manufacturing, uh, more B2B, business to business related. Uh, this is more stable and very often inward looking as to how we uh, how they function. And so uh, with a lot of ERP systems that are quite static and less customer facing activity. Uh, and, and typically you will find there more technical oriented CIOs. A business CIO you will have will find more in companies that are uh, facing uh, very dynamic uh, markets and dynamic because they are customer facing. So uh, companies being a residential market with customers that you reach out towards uh, through several channels, digital interaction channels that evolve with the behavior on the customer that also changes quite rapidly. And so there the, uh, the intake is not so much rolling out, let's say, a static ERP system, I'm not going to mention a few, but let's say static ERP systems. But there the challenge is more just doing the next best thing, uh, having an impact on your customers, on your employees internally in way of working in an environment that is very much uh, fast moving and where the better is the enemy of the best. So you're just going to do good enough and you're not going to go after the perfect type of solutions. You just want to know next step I will never regret it. It will create me a little bit of value. Internal employees will remain happy because they are also customers and the external customers outside the company uh, will also kind of uh, get a better satisfaction and therefore be willing to, to, to strengthen the relationship with us. So, so there you will have more, uh, let's say, business-oriented CIOs. Thank you for this very interesting insight. I really like the bit about the batteries. Uh, is the enemy of the best. I know I've heard it a few times as done is better than perfect. And I, I really do try to you know, balance this and include this, this balance also in, in my personal career because I, I do value it. Uh, nonetheless, I understand what you described as um, being very much people-focused and people-centric. And that is more or less the topic of our conversation today, building and managing a one-team attitude in the context of working with us in IT and with external partners. So with that in mind, we, we can start with a, with a high-level discussion on what do you per perceive digital transformation is all about? Because there's a few takes on that, and I know that you have a specific idea on, on how do you understand that. So if you can please elaborate, what's your, your approach to digital transformation? Okay, so uh, digital transformation, first of all, uh, in that word, there is digital. And, and that's just a, a target, a means to. A means to changing the way the company thinks runs and builds. So this is really the, uh, the underlying paradigm. So typically, for example, uh, some customers, they are kind of, some, some, some enterprises, companies 
are quite uh, transaction focused oriented. In many cases, in companies like companies like this, there is a need for culture change onto trying to step away from that transaction centricity towards more customer centricity, which is a, a culture change, which is really, uh, and digitalization comes into this play, of course. But first of all, it's really transforming the way the company thinks, organizes itself and, and goes forward from a, a too technical mindset very often towards more a mindset uh, that is uh, customer oriented. And digitalization plays a part in there, but it's not the only thing because it impacts the mindset of people. It impacts the organization of the company profoundly, which is also a transformation, like uh, in the context in which I'm active now at Interparking. Now we are evolving the organization at the side of the business from transaction teams to customer teams and product teams, which has a profound dumb impact on the way of working. And you kind of accelerate this by introducing business uh, IT platforms that uh, accelerate this uh, learning. Okay, so this is really what what is about. This is really about transformation. So it's not only the technology dimension. Is this is not the starting point, but the starting point is more the people or, or the cultural uh, dimension that we talk about, and then compile up enough uh, momentum, motivation, and less fear into the company to, to do this step, and it changes profoundly how the, 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 the company works. And so in a way, I would say, of course, this takes a bit of time, but uh, the, the challenge is really to do very early small tap steps, as we, always, as we always say, and to go into some kind of a flow into the company so that you can call the company a learning company. So you're not going to get there in, in, let's say in, in X number of months, at a certain moment in time, based on the first results, the first steps that you have done, suddenly you see that the company through the transformation organizationally becomes a learning company and the ball starts rolling and off you go. And there is a way of thinking, there is a way of doing your operations, there's a way of building things that installs itself into the company. And you have experience growing, learning, growing, and of course, also value generated. This is, I'm trying to explain, this is what this digital transformation, what digital transformation is about. Not so much platform technology, but, but the overall uh, company transformation. It looks like what I understand you're explaining is, is this organizational culture where you shift your team, the mindset of the team to being in a constant change. And in this kind of plan, do, check, act approach where you iteratively in a preset cadence see if what you do you know, really brings you closer to the end goal and then iteratively after many, many iterations gets you, gets you, gets you closer. Is that correct? Yes. And, and in fact, don't do, don't do too much planning. Planning, if, very often you have planning paralysis. You, you try to think. Yeah. You start with this Gantt, you know, everything nice and sexy in Excel and, and color coding, etc. <laughs> exactly. You, you, you try to think it all through. You try to think about all of the risks, risks that you're going to encounter uh, on your path. Uh, you're afraid because you have never done this before this way of thinking, this way of building, this way of running. Uh, and so kind of very often what I say to the companies, and, and, and this is very often what they say to me, is that, uh, yeah, okay, we understand that we have to go there, but we have never gone there and we have never, we have never worked like this. Can't we do some kind of a full-fledged assessment, uh, a highly expensive consultants that come on board from another planet and do a some kind of a study and then we'll figure it out all out and then we do the first step. So typically what I respond to, to that is I try to reassure them that, that it's absolutely normal that uh, very often there is a lack of experience, but we have to act it out. You have to start with the acting. You really have to... Uh, start acting out this new role, almost trick yourself into thinking, 
I've done this before while you haven't. You just you start applying it, this way of, of, of operating, this way of working, this way of approaching, for example, business customers with some new technologies, with best practices already built in that come from other industries, and you act it out as if you've done it before, but you didn't. And while you act it out, you kind of get your lessons not through the wisdom of a book, but you get your lessons through the field. Mm -hmm. Very early on, you get a mirror in front of you, a operational mirror as, as to what does that mean? Working in this different way, more digitally, reaching out to customers through different channels, uh, having people that are more and more uh, customer-oriented instead of technology-oriented. And then, of course, your, your organization comes under pressure and sometimes peak moments of pressure, you might find out that, that some employees are not fit for this way of working, which is absolutely normal. Then you reorient or, or you, you find a solution for this. And as you go while you're acting it out, you have your lessons and you create value. And at a certain moment in time, you become a learning company. So you didn't start with, with, with a hefty planning type of exercise, but you started out by trying to find a small footprint, just a false, just a, one small footprint, a reason to move. Let's do only this and let's take, take it then from, from, from there. I mean, this is, this is how we typically... Uh, yeah, that's how the snowball starts, you know, small and then it grows over time. I do also, I do also agree that there's all, oftentimes this planning paralysis where people are just afraid to, to, to just move on because they are not, you know, reassured enough by time allocated to analysis, planning, etc. Whereas start with acting is it's just learning by doing. But some would fear it's kind of fake it till you make it. Whereas I do also believe that, you know, you're never ready enough to feel comfortable, comfortable enough unless you're like 60 years old and done this hundred, hundreds of times. But in, in today's, you know, t times of change and uncertainty, volatility and disruption, we just don't have that comfort. Yes, you do not, you do not have the time to, to think it all through. And I think that, uh, of course, the, the steps that we make are um, a minimum, that's, I would say, um, analyzed, but, but not exaggeratingly. And uh, the first steps we take, they are... Um, yeah, I would I say the genius sits in keeping these steps simple, but still value oriented to an extent that they all feel the benefit uh, at all levels, the C level, the middle management, the people that live at these projects. So, so really, if we look at the step that we are doing, we invest more time if we think about definition time or planning time into uh, how simple can we make this? Uh, are there areas we have to cheat, for example, to make it even more simple? Because, of course, we always say there should be room for mistakes, but not too many. Okay, But because the world around us is becoming more and more unforgiving when it comes to compliance, security and stuff. So there is, of course, a ticket in. Uh, but, but we will we'll try to, 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 to make it to a simple first step where we know that, uh, okay, maybe there is a risk, but the chances of, of success are quite high. For example, about two years ago, kind of the company kind of intuitively came to the conclusion that, uh, yeah, sure, I mean, we have to become more and more customer-centric. If, if a customer drives into a parking somewhere in Europe, we are responsible for that customer. Whatever service providers we have in the parking, recharging companies, delivering to the boot, going to the toilet, going into the shopping center, catching your airplane, having your appointment with your doctor, if it is an appointment in, into the hospital or whatever. The moment the, the customer drives into a parking, we are responsible for that, uh, for that parking. And taking it from there, we kind of, yeah, we concluded, yeah, we don't have that customer view. We need some kind of a customer platform we could have started a hefty analysis of all of the solutions that are on the market, contacted the gardeners or, or 
or the integrators of this world analyzed uh, 3,000 pages of documents. But of course, this is what we, we didn't do. We just said, uh, look, that information on platforms and technology is there. Collectively, we have a few people, given our background, that have played around a bit with these kind of platforms. Let's do a V0. We, we give ourselves, uh, what was it, uh, five months to uh, break open the legacy, which was transaction-oriented. We've cheated a little bit integration to go fast, and then we rolled out, based on a, a set of use cases of three countries, a first platform. And so a couple of minutes later, the platform was there, already in the hands of business people. Was it uh, a huge step? No, it wasn't. Was it an important step? Yes, it was. And now, uh, a couple of months later, we have five countries on the, on the on the platform, and changes are uh, being applied on a weekly basis, on an incremental phases. You know, in an agile way, we kind of and there is not a lot, a lot of development to it. It's it's more change, configuration, a bit of business analysis, uh, with small teams, very small teams that uh, and mixed teams, very important with the business integrated. Uh, that move forward on, on these type of, uh, of, of dig digitalizations. It, it really does sound like a very interesting case study, and I'm glad to hear that you were not you know, afraid of just giving it a go. Uh, but I wonder how do external partners blend into such context, because more and more often in the IT industry, you just can't do everything your own uh, by yourself, you know, with your own hands. And... Um, how do you, you know, perhaps evaluate partners? How do you prepare them for cooperation in that manner? Do they, you know, fit or not? What's your what's your take? I think, uh, well, first of all, um, you say partners. Eh? So that's already a very important word. Uh, partners uh, as opposed to uh, suppliers. And for us, partners, for me, this means that these partners and especially the culture of these partners and the people that sit in the scope of these partners, they are capable of blending in to that culture of the company. Okay, so this means that, uh, for example, we have several development squads that work on all parts of digitalization with respect to marketing, sales, communication, billing, and, and, and so on. These small squads very often they are constitute, small teams constituted of people coming from several horizons. Okay. Now, it might be in one squad that we, for example, have two partners that delivered two uh, people. We also call them colleagues, by the way, uh, with maybe a senior specialist here locally in Belgium for the whole of Europe. This squad thinks as a team. This is very important. The partners, they have to understand this in the sense that, like, if we have a, a partner between brackets that has a reflex of, if something doesn't work into that team, if these people will go to their home office and complain, we are kind of worried. The squad should think as one team, wherever the people come from, from which horizon, and that squad should escalate the points that need to be escalated to get more support, to communicate an important thing, and so on. So, like, kind of, and this is a cultural thing. So, this means that uh, if 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 uh, someone that comes from from a partner company and sits into a interparking development squad, they really have to think as to one team and emit the messages, the next calls, the escalations together jointly. Uh, if, I don't know if I make myself clear, but this is some kind of a mindset that is, well, not, well, it is, I was going to say, hard to find. Maybe it is hard to find, but it, it, it stands or it falls with, on one side, the culture of the partner, and on the other side, the capacity of us to convince and motivate people into the part partner context to work for us. We need to convince them. We need to motivate them together with the partner to say, look, there is the case, interparking, for example. We have a couple of challenges. These are the challenges. 
this is what we know, this is what we don't know. Typically, we will always try to explain that to potential candidates at the partner to explain the challenges because we know if the individual sees something interesting, sees a challenge into this, we know that this person coming from this partner, if the partner allows their people to be quite open about integration, we know that that it's going to work. You see, it's it's uh, we are not into uh, what we sometimes refer refer to as uh, trying to find a uh, development sweatshop or a body shopper or whatsoever. We're trying to find partners that understand very well. We need to convince our par- our people, and you, Mr. Customer. So us in this case. You also need to convince our people because we need to keep them also motivated. So we have a common objective. We all need to remain motivated so we can mobilize these mixed teams in a geographic setting that is uh, anyway more and more a small village uh, today. So so this is not... uh, and, And this is, I think, this is what qualifies a good partner. And typically we will do a number of small tests well, again, I mean, this is again the same view, act. Don't plan for a new partner. Act. Try to have a few discussions. Visit the partner. Try to see how they are organized. Try to see how many toys you can see into the building. Try to, try to really try to, to sense the culture of the partners and then act. Act on something that is relevant and see where it goes. And then it proves itself and then more and more it becomes something that is integrated and trust-based. I think that's important. Is that what you call the right shoring then? Instead of offshoring, near shoring, I, I noticed on your LinkedIn profile that you use this word right shoring. Yeah, so the right shoring, uh, well, this is something I've written 100 years ago. <laughs> so, uh, no, the, 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 this is not what I meant with, with the right shoring. Uh, the right shoring back in time was really meant into a uh, geographical, also cultural distance, you know, uh, being Europe or being Africa or being India. With all respect uh, for the geographies, with all respect of this, but uh, let's say the right shoring is really about, uh, you know, culturally, also geographically, you need to have a good fit. And 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 this you have to to. To, to think through. Right, let's say my definition of right shoring today is that uh, there is only one way of right shoring. This is what I just explained to you, is really uh, going after uh, partners uh, that have this uh, also this flexibility and this people mindset that are also at the same time protective of their people. You care about the people on, on your side. You are you uh, you kind of you are worried not worried is not the right word but but it keeps you awake to 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 have your people very motivated we we uh, we also have this and at the same time you understand that it's very important for as well your people as in this case our people to put them behind one challenge that is mobilizing that makes them eager to go after this, that even makes them e- eager to hop into an airplane, to say hello. I'm going to sit not in front of a camera, but I'll spend some time at the customer. We also get into an airplane. To we send also developers or analysts to the partner to say, look, we can't do this all the time, but we have a challenge. We understand the challenge. We have a network we set up, and this is this what I call this this people oriented. Uh, approach that is so uh, so fundamental and then even more and more important with the younger generations that uh, that come on board now they really for them uh, you can see this that's very important for them so what's the biggest challenge when it comes to building such a mindset such a team such a partner collaboration what's, what's the biggest deal uh, I think uh, the hard skills finding the hard skills that's not the biggest challenge Okay. Uh, in any case, uh, these kind kind of profiles, if I may call it like this, their profession is learning and fast learning. That's their profession. They're used to that. They can quickly get and acquire the hard skills. 
Of course, some things are, are maybe super specialized. A data scientist, you don't become that overnight. But in general, they are quick learners. The real challenge, again, and I'm going to repeat myself, is uh, to have people on board that go the extra mile, that go the extra uh, stretch, that, uh, that, that feel that they, for that mission, for that challenge, for that objective, that they uh, kind of sit into this one team. Sometimes they might be working with a, with a colleague, I always call them colleagues, who has a French name or a German name, a Polish name, or whatever. It's a small team, five, six people, and they, they know that it has to be like a watch. It needs to, in all trust, function together. They need to have a feeling of uh, they, can't, they cannot be beaten. I mean, they are unstoppable. You see, this this kind this is more attitude that that we are going after, and it starts with the culture of your company. This 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 let's say attitude at the, at the individual level, culture at the partner level. Uh, so that's I think uh, that's that's very important. This is the main challenge because very often, let's say uh, sometimes it doesn't work. We've we've had cases where uh, it. Uh, it, it didn't, didn't work. Uh, luckily, uh, it, it was uh, the engagement was a test, not too fundamental. Uh, we we, we kind of tested it with, with all the explanations, and it didn't work because we didn't have this disconnect, this, this one team kind of integration. You just know. Sometimes after uh, you give it a try, a few sprints, you just know whether it fits or not. Yes, and, and you can't really, you, you cannot always explain why it doesn't work, but it doesn't work. And Yet again, I understand that you just acted, test and tried instead of planning and, you know, being paralyzed on the, on the very early. Yeah. Thank you, Herman. It was a, a very interesting discussion. I really do. I feel like we're on the same page when it comes to plenty of, of, of these approaches that you described, being a learning company, not spending too much time on planning, instead start with acting focus on the culture and the right fit and understand that not everything is the right fit, but you know you have to know what's your fit and then look for that and test, test and try. That will be this episode in a nutshell, <laughs> more or less. And I can really tell that you're passionate about it, which I guess is helpful. <laughs> it helps, yeah. Thank you, Herman. It was IT Insights with Future Processing. Okay, a pleasure. Thank you. Visit us at itinsights.tech and dive into our podcasts, webinars, and events.